Hey, I welcome to the Barcast Podcast 2024. I am Salt. And I'm George. Yeah, we're here to tell you all about Big Bar 2024. You want to watch the entire podcast. We're going to be telling you the date, the locations, the cha- well, not the locations, the location, the changes uh, to the elite singles. Also, we're going to talk a bit about mini bar as well as yours training blocks. So you want to stay tuned for this entire podcast. I will start with the date, George. Tell me. Right, so you would have seen us put a date out on, on the socials. Um, we sent this date everywhere. The date was June 22nd. Yeah, I had that um, tattooed in my brain. Right? Correct. And, and part of the reason for choosing that date was we wanted to create an event that visitors on the island who came for cricket could come and spectate and see what Barbados had to offer as far as fitness offerings were concerned. So the date was suggested by BTMI right. to help to create some activities for the cricket tourists to keep them engaged on the days off. So and that would have been like a down day. That was a down day. There was cricket yeah. matches on the 20th, the 21st, and the 23rd, but nothing on the 22nd. Oh, right. So that, was, that seemed like the perfect opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, BTMI has now subsequently made some changes to the, to the way they're structuring their sports event sponsorship. Yeah. Decided that since BTMI aren't really a partner in the event anymore, yeah. we're going to forget about catering the event as a spectator event for cricket tourists. For cr- right. Uh, and come back to providing the event as an event for local athletes and regional athletes, because part of the part of the issue with June twenty second was that we were really putting on a spectator event for tourists. Because yeah. with so many cricket visitors on the island, they might have been harder to find rules for the guys coming out from St. Vincent, the guys coming from Aruba, the guys coming from wherever who wanted to come and take part in the race, but were finding hotel rooms and accommodation and exorbitantly expect expected. It would be, it would be more expensive Correct. and uh, less available, avail, availability with England and Australia. Exactly. Here, yeah. and, and then, so now that we've pushed it to Ju- July 6th, by then the cricket is over. Yeah. Um, all those persons are gone. And we're still kind of in the, in the low season. We haven't really quite hit into crop over season yet. Yeah. So now as far as fighting availability for rooms and good accommodation rates and so on, we can get a few of our Caribbean athletes coming up for the event. And uh, not to mention, it gives us another two weeks of training. And it gives us a couple additional weeks of training because so it's, it's been a very short cycle. And this year, it feels like we had one thing after the another. We, we had, you know, Ruck Up blowing up and having uh, two graduation days and a third one in, in, in place. Yeah. We had Barfit Games. Uh, and now, you know, we had a kids camp. So yeah. it was just one event after the other. So this additional two weeks gives the athletes a little more time to prepare, gives us a little bit more time to uh, interact with our sponsors and see what they want uh, and get everything ready for July 6th. The other big news is a change in location. Yeah, so yeah, we are, we're going back to the, the home. The, the home I, I, the I home call it Barton, home. Right? I, I mean, I love Botanical Gardens. Yeah. I thought it was excellent last year, but we know that we love Peg. Yeah, and, and again, the, the reason for moving back to Peg, I personally, again, the same kind of issue with a spectator issue. And for the athletes, I think the spectator issue works for the athletes as well. Because you want people out there. Yeah. You want them supporting you. You want them cheering you on. Um, and bringing it to a more central location helped to facilitate that. Um, Botanical Gardens had, has indicated that they're going to be doing some major road works within the gardens. And this was actually planned from last year. So last year, you know, we, we announced PEG. We went to Botanical Gardens, and then it seemed like it wasn't happening. This was because they weren't sure when the actual world works were starting. Right. So they've indicated to us that they don't want to give us a date and then have us come and see, you know, a bunch of construction going yeah, on within so the gardens. Yeah, so again, yeah. yeah. Um, we had actually identified a, a site in the International Gardens, which is on the other side of the road. And I, I really liked that site at first because it really gave more visibility to the incidental traffic. Guys who were driving the bike. Yeah, yeah, and it, was, it had a, a nice high peak and you could really be on either side of the road using the the tunnel and i felt it might have made for a good spectacle but there's just no infrastructure right. there's no infrastructure and and it would have by the time we finished cutting down here and leveling out here and installing this and the next you know with with limited sponsorship this year it would have yeah. been too much so, so maybe in the future we will be back at botanical then. yeah because I, I again i think i think from a spectator perspective it's just easier to access you know um, so maybe in the future we'll be back at Botanical, um, but for now we're, we're going back to Peg, and uh, we're going to probably have uh, a, a, the first summer Peg we've had for a while because yeah. it's always been in, in November. And also we're back to being the most breathtaking obstacle course race in the world. Correct. You know, I thought when, when we were no longer doing it as a cricket tourist spectator event, I thought about pushing it all the way back to where it was, November, October, late October, early November, or even, you know, early December. And I thought, well, everybody's already, I got people who don't normally train. Normally it's going to be running on people to train. Yeah. People calling me and they were, I'm like, everybody's hot for it. They've seen the date, they've started to prepare. Mm-hmm. So let's just push through and get this one done 
in July, and then it gives us the rest of the year to plan some other activities and yeah. into 2025. And we still got Amaroni to come, all Correct. those other good stuff. So, new date, mm -hmm. July? July 6th. July 6th. Uh -huh. And uh, back to Peg. Back to Peg. I think, just before we move on to the next topic, one of the things we realized with National Botanical Gardens last year was the way how people take in the sport as well. Mm -hmm. Versus that people follow their right. team, they follow yeah, uh, they're the individual spectator that they're they're supporting and support them along the course. Right. So we could probably see some more of that at Peg as well. Peg lends to that as well. Yeah, and and I think like like now we know um, um Paul Lance Lance Bourne is now in charge. Yeah. Our, rest in peace, Paul. Now that Paul, Paul has passed, his son Lance has taken over, and and Lance is doing an incredible job. So previously, I think in Peg we kind of had to work with what was given to us, mm -hmm. um, but Lance is very much hands-on and on board with getting us what we want oh. so i think we can get an even more spectator friendly uh race at peg where it's more condensed uh we have large swaths of area that we can basically zigzag up and down fields nice. to get 3k in an area where as a spectator i don't have to move too far to right. be able to take in the entire race now speaking of supporting your team and the individuals let's talk about the individuals because you have told me that there are going to be some changes, and you told some of the people in training as well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some changes to the singles event. Yeah, in the, in the elite event, this is where you're going to see the major change. Uh, and part of this is that we want to be able to, to start to select a team that goes abroad to represent Barbados. Uh, hopefully this brings some interest to Barbados as an obstacle racing venue, but it gives our athletes who are training for three, four, five years a chance to go and represent their country um, on the world stage. So in all the major international events now, we've moved away from burpees. We've moved away from burpees because it's so hard to judge. <laughs> it requires, a, a, basically you, you, you need twice the number of volunteers because you need volunteers on every station where anybody could fail to count burpees. Because obviously- And they count, talking, to count burpees for individuals. They count, yeah, because we're talking now, you're talking about world champions. So you can't have somebody doing 19 and running. You yeah. need to ensure it's 20 if, it's, if that's the criteria. You need to make sure that they all look relatively the same. So now there's no repping for burpees. And you know, personally, I've hated burpees as a, as a penalty for the longest time. Yeah. And, and so what we're going to do, we're going to adopt the world obstacle criteria, um, which is giving three bands. So each athlete will start with three wristbands. And for each obstacle missed, you lose a band. Mm. Okay. So basically, you have a chance. You could fill three obstacles and then, you know, you could continue to race for fun but you don't really have a chance of being on the podium. Okay, okay? Yeah, right. so if you have no response... If you have no response, basically you, you can't score. Yeah. So the, the rules say that each athlete must arrive to the last obstacle with at least one wristband intact. On the, right. uh, and the, the way they've written it is that the last obstacle should be an obstacle that is, uh, has a relatively high degree of difficulty and is visually impactful from a spectator perspective, right? So that gives us a lot of leeway. We got a bunch of them. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we got a bunch of them. Yeah. But each athlete must cross the finish line with all three bands. So, you so how do you reclaim your bands? Yeah. Let's say the last obstacle is stuntman. Mm. You get there with one band in place, you get over stuntman successfully, but you can only cross the finish line with all three bands in place. The way you reclaim bands is by running a penalty loop. Mm. So the penalty loops, again, are, are meant to be as hard as or a little bit more difficult than your hardest obstacle because again you want to bias the race towards the athletes who are really proficient at the obstacles know, right. so the penalty loop shouldn't be easier than the hardest obstacle on the course so it's usually in the form of a carry the penalty loop and it's usually somewhere between four or five hundred meters right, right? so, so you, have, work, you can have either 800 or, or a key to run with a carry correct yeah right so and that's how you get your two bands back now you know it's, it's i don't see anyone trying to game that system so in the past, we, we've seen, and you yourself is one of those athletes, yeah, last, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you get to an obstacle that you think has, is going to set you up for a more difficult course after this obstacle. And mm. last year, you know, we had that area that was, I will, I will say, was maybe a little poorly designed by the race director, <laughs> uh, Grip City, where if you spent the time on the spider web, which was a cargo net obstacle, yeah. you know, you might have found that your grip strength was a little compromised and you would have to take more time through the rest of that section. Uh, some athletes just chose not to do that obstacle. And the, the athletes who did it, got through it successfully, were now in a compromised position. We feel like everybody should feel the same way. Yeah. So, so those athletes did burpees. And again, some of the burpees were ugly as hell. Yeah. But they ain't nobody to tell you different. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's the rule. Do 20 burpees, boy. They ain't no performance points. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They ain't no style points. So you do your 20 burpees and you go along and now 
you have an advantage on the athlete who actually completed the obstacle in an obstacle race. Because he, that person's forearms are a little bit more taxed. Correct. And I, we had always said in training last year, because full disclosure, like, you, you look at the system and you're afraid of funny ways Absolutely. because it's a competition. Correct. We know that you can train burpees. We know exactly. how you can feel after burpees, so you know to get better at burpees. Correct. Which is what some of us had yeah. chose to do, but I understand the race director as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with that. You work within the rules of the, of the game, right? Yeah. Um, but if we're looking now to, to send athletes abroad, we want to make sure you guys are set up for success and not set up for failure. We don't want you leaving here, you know, doing an event that is a burpee event, and then when you get there, you realize, hang on, I really should have spent more time trading my grip strength. I really should have spent more time hanging upside down. I really should have spent more time getting accustomed to heights because these are the kind of obstacles that you're going to see when you get to the world stage. Okay, so you said July the 6th. Mm -hmm. That's one day. Yes. You so become accustomed to bar being more than one day. Now. Talk correct, about correct. That. What's the format going to be like? Yeah, so we're going back to the, to the single day event. Um, and part, part of the reason for that came out of having the event in November, when there was close to December, when there was always a bunch of entertainment activities. Um, we feel like it kind of almost split the crowd because not only were you people were having to decide that they're going to spend both days at PEG or at Botanical Gardens or they went at which day we're going to choose. Now they can identify that day in the calendar and say, this is bar day. I clear my calendar that one day and I can spend the day at PEG. I take in the whole family. I can eat in the restaurant. I can hang out in the pavilion and I can take in all the action. So we've gone back to the one day format. So now, obviously, we know there's a bunch of athletes who do two events. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to make sure that we write into the, the day's schedule enough recovery for, for you guys. Um, so we're bringing on the mini bar again. And, and, I, and I still don't want it to be a situation where the individuals come and they're running early in the morning so they could get recovery in the afternoon and there's nobody there early in the morning. Yeah. So in my mind right now, we're going to fi finalize the schedule and, and make it available once it's completely fine-tuned with the exact times and everything. In my mind, we started with the kids. Mini bar. Mini bar. Then we might come to the singles, and then we're going to go to the corporate. So what that does, it, it brings the parents for the kids mm. before. It preps the corporate people who are after to create a spectator yeah, group. Yeah, na natural spectators. Na natural spectators well, for the open individual. Wave. Bring the open wave again after the corporate, so we got a chance to redo the course and get ready yeah. and give you guys some some a little more recovery so you got the corporate race you got the open wave and now you, then you have the, the elite team, team event the so team you got team. full recovery in there to get ready and go because again we still have to make sure that the event is finished within good time so we have daylight and we can do a presentation and award ceremony and everything all within daylight so it's a full day of activity Correct. at bar the thing about um bar is that the team event mm -hmm to my mind, draws the most spectators because yeah. it's four people uh, that are attracting people, right? Correct. But the singles uh -huh. is the more, is where the action really at. Right? Yes. Do you watch the singles? That's what people really get in tune for, yeah. excited about because it's neck and neck a lot of the time. Yeah. So, and it's a more would, exciting event, I would say, would, to yeah, watch. I would more advise people to make sure and get there for the singles and then spend the rest of the day and support your team. Correct, because the thing with the team event is obviously if there's, it used to be four previously, now it's three. If there's three people, and, and their friends and family are coming, it's way more than if it's one person and his friends or family yeah, are coming. Exactly. So just by virtue of being more persons in the event. Also, I think, you know, we know that there are some people who get to a certain level of proficiency or whether they don't have the confidence to do the individual event on their own. We always have more persons who are leaning towards the team than leaning towards a single event, even though it tends to be the same athletes in a bunch of them. I always tell people that a team is a little easier than single just because you get, you get rest to work in Correct. to the event. Correct. Okay, so that's a mini bar. Tell me about mini bar quickly though before. Um, he's been saying that you've been trying to get off the ground for as long as I remember bar, right? Correct. From the second Correct. year he was there, I can do this thing for the children, mini bar. Yeah. We, and we just never had, we just never had the sponsorship or the financial support. Always had a great name though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But this year we, um, we were able for the second year to pull off uh, the mini bar camp, obstacle camp at, at PEG. Uh, this time through the support of the Amaroni Trust Foundation. Um, so they're committed to the mini bar sponsorship. Okay, thank uh, you. So they've moved off and they've allowed maybe a bigger brand or, or a brand that has products and services to sell to take on the elite individuals event. Okay. You know, which is obviously from a, from a performance, associating your product or service with a performance event, that's the one, either that one or the team is the ones you want. Right? Yeah. So now let's say 
I, you know, just saying this, maybe PDA Light comes and takes the individual event. Yeah. Um, they can sponsor, you know, Amaroni will take the, the mini bar event and everybody can come out on the day. Everybody from 8 till 11, all the way up to, you know, yeah. 90 years old and take part in bar. So the mini bar is for 8 to 11? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then between 11 and 18, what are they going to be doing? They would have to compete in the open wave as an age group. Basically. As an age group. Yeah. And you got an age group for that there. Right. Before I move on to the other topic, though, I was talking, a lot of people have been talking about the pistol mm -hmm. and new obstacles. Right. The, the pistol has definitely made an appearance. The pistol yes. will be there Correct. Um, on July 6th. Yeah, and that's the other major change in the individual event. We've seen Spartan introduce it. We've seen OCR World Championships introduce it. And obviously, World Obstacle has introduced it too. And part of the introduction for the laser pistol is because obstacle racing is managing to get on the Olympic stage through modern pentathlon. Uh, modern pentathlon previously included the equestrian event, which is a horse event. Mm -hmm. um, and, and over the years, you know, with, with accidents and, and animals having to be euthanized and so on, the animal rights activists have been calling for a while to get the equestrian event out. Because right. it's obviously, and the other thing too is, you know, it's like, who are you competing against? You're competing against a person or against a horse? If, right, you know, right, 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 right. So now that the, if you want to maintain the, the pentathlon and not a quadrathlon, you have to add the fifth event, and the fifth event has come through the close association of the president of World OCR, Ian Adamson, and his relationship with UIPM, which is the International Modern Pentathlon oh, okay. Association. So through that, we've managed to, to form an alliance that allows obstacle racing in, its, in some form to be in the Olympic Games, and, and so we're adopting some of the modern pentathlon disciplines in obstacle racing mm -hmm. to bridge the gap. And the, 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 the discipline we're adopting is the laser pistol. Okay. Right? So uh, for those of you who want to go and get your own laser pistols and practice in the meantime, you know, it's going to be um, 10 meters away from the target. Um, there, there's a, an approved obstacle racing um, laser gun. Mm -hmm. You can just go online and search that. Uh, and generally, in the races, in the international races, you have to hit the target three times. Oh, okay. Right? So when we, when we train, we, we go for the full five times. The difference, though, as opposed to all the other obstacles, the difference with the laser pistol is that if you don't get the three targets in the 30 seconds, it's in the 20 seconds, it's a 30-second time penalty. Okay. That's the only obstacle with a time penalty. Because I guess they're, they're figuring, well... That's, so know, that's the rule from OCR. That's the rule from OCR, yeah. They're figuring that a guy might come up, and if he's relatively accurate, he gets them three targets in 10 seconds, and now you can make somebody run 500 meters with a sandbag to make it for that. It just seemed... Like it wasn't really Too much equivalent, of a yeah. yeah, yeah. And so the time penalty comes on the on the laser pistol. On the laser pistol, on the laser pistol. It's only three times mm -hmm. they have to hit it, yeah. and as you said, in thirty seconds. In twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. In twenty seconds, yeah. But that might seem like a short time, no, but yeah, it's it's plenty. Like when we train, we see that we we we, we get through it. In, yeah, and it's only ten meters. And it's only ten. Surface ten only. Yeah. But but you mentioned going and buying your own pistol or whatever, but. The last thing we want to talk about in this podcast would be the training blocks. So they, yeah. they are available for your training blocks as well. Absolutely. We try to put them into the training blocks. And what we did this year that was a little different. And I think I, I thought about doing this more for the, for the beginner athletes, but I'm seeing that, you know, the more experienced athletes are taking advantage of it as well, where we have, we've added an extra day. So obviously we, we need the kind of race simulation where we're doing the obstacles in a strength and conditioning session. We have a day for some athletes where it's just coaching on the obstacles, where we have two or three coaches and we're just giving them instruction on how to perform a particular obstacle. Run, obstacle racing is largely running, so we have running the running carries. specific yeah. session at, at the Usain Bolt Sports Complex. And then we added a, a fourth session, which was just open obstacle access. And I, I wanted to do that without the coaching because I think sometimes, you know, you have the coach and you're trying to do it how the coach has instructed you to do it without necessarily figuring out the best way for you and your body. So it gives you a time to take some of those coaching cues maybe, or seeing something else that you've seen online, and come on your own and just play on the obstacle till you find what works best for you in an environment that doesn't really have as much of a time crunch on it, right. where you're not out of breath, you ain't running, you ain't doing burpees around it. Just take your time and play with the obstacles to find what works best for you. Right, and so and that's a, a standard part of the training blocks right now. Correct. Tell me about the training blocks. Um, is it... Because we're going, going to July mm -hmm. 6th, so it's one big training block? So, no, they're going to be in four-week blocks again. Okay. Uh, so the next one starts in May, 
And actually, the June training block was going to be a little bit short because of the race on the 22nd. So yeah. now we get a full um, training block in June. Yeah. Uh, we have just about a week or so to do pure race prep and deload. So we arrive to race day fresh, fresh with nothing but race, race, um, race qualities in the muscles and yeah. the heart and the lungs. It's going on July the July 6th. 6th, yes. We're back at Peg Farm. Back at Peg Farm. And the training blocks are available. Uh, you could probably like to jump into the mayor one. I believe Correct. what we're doing right now is full. Yeah, we will just add another time. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> been, it's, been, it's been a, a blessing and a, and a curse at the same time, but more of a blessing because we have everybody wanting to get onto this bar block. And we have those persons out there who are interested in fitness who aren't necessarily interested in bar doing rock up as well so we got three rock up blocks running oh, nice. we got um well between the corporate the open wave and the elite three bar blocks running so as we get down into may and june I don't know what we can do, but we can go and find some place to put the people. We might go around them all day. Midday, midday bar classes. <laughs> midday bar class. That won't, that won't be a bad idea at all. Because that's when it's competing, right? Yeah, but it's competing in the middle of the day. And there's a training how you want to run it. I know a former champion, uh, Dan Day Brown, he does a lot of his training in, in the midday, awesome. like 1 o'clock, 1.30, because in yeah. his mind, that's when the race is going to be. So he, he needs to train in the conditions of the race so he can really compare his training, his training um, performance to what his race performance will be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very important. Congratulations, though, I must say, on the success of the World Cup, success of Bar, mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to what's going to come later on in the year, whatever your mind is cooking up right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, World Cup, I think, has been what a lot of persons have been searching for with Bar. Um, there's a lot of persons out there who've seen the content on the bar page. Again, big shout out to Astro Media and some of the quality of the content they've put out for us. Yes, the Astro. Yeah, yeah, they've, yeah, people have been seeing the exciting physical component of, of, of functional training and wanting to be a part of it. But maybe somebody is maybe a little five pound overweight or 10 pound overweight. Maybe somebody got a shoulder problem and they can't necessarily do the skills, yeah. but they still want to be in that kind of high intensity environment. Rock up gives them the opportunity to do that. If you can't run, you can't do bar. Yeah. But you could do rock up, yeah. you know, so... And you can get the benefits of the workout because you're carrying the weight. Correct. And, and, and the community is the other thing, you know. The rock up community is kind of now an extension of the bar race community. Uh, and people are looking for that. Nobody joins a club to be the only one there. <laughs> you know, nobody... Yeah. That, that's the thing. If you're joining everybody nowadays, you can do at-home workouts. There's a zillion bits of content on social media. But people come into a training environment with other people to feed off of that energy to some nice to get the expert coaching. But it's not just about the coaching. It's about the community and what that gives you as far as an upliftment to do better for yourself, you know. And I've seen it at the graduations, just the Correct. way that because the work at graduation for those who have never been is three phases. It's the rock, mm -hmm. then it's the beach assault, and Correct. then it's the ward. And I feel like 85% of the people mm -hmm. stay till the end. Yep. They, the only people that leave is people that have something they're going to do. They right, go and right, carry right. the daughter the lessons right. or something. But everybody, even if they're not doing beach assault right. or they're not doing the ward at the end, they are there cheering on. They, you don't have to ask the volunteers to count reps. Right. Right. So you got enough people here to help yeah, count reps. Right. Right. So I think that that community is really blossomed mm -hmm. into something special. And what I like about it as well, I see a lot of people coming back. They, 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 they may not get a dog tag. They say, well, came back for that next thing. I don't get this thing, I came back now. They can be work hard, right? Because yeah. let's say we, we'd written, I, writ, I wrote what I thought was a, a really well thought out six week program. Yeah. So let's say we got group A coming through, they would come and do that program and they would leave. Then group B would come and they would do the same program and then we'd leave. No, it's got to be right. Why like, 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 can't I get them the same <laughs> thing again? Do it, yeah. So I got to write another program. I mean, he can't laugh me third time. You got to do another program. So yeah, it's been making me uh, stretch my brain to keep coming up because the constraints to the programming is that it's sandbag and kettlebells. Yeah. Right? So we're writing, working everything between the unstable apparatus because that's what you're going to find in the real world. Um, and so it's, it's been a challenge coming up with it, but I enjoy the challenge yeah. and it's been working out well so far. And I love that it's the balance though. They've got people that are interested in bar and they've got the people that are interested in work out. There's some people, Fiona, interested in both. In both. <laughs> Fiona's doing both props right now. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 a big shout out to her because seeing her in fitness improvement over the last few years has been phenomenal. And that's, that's what we got to thank bar and the bar community for the fitness level of Barbadians and that's being so welcoming to people because as I said, the worker community is super welcoming. Yeah. And I even saw it extend down to the bar camp mm. where you had those interviews. Uh, don't forget, follow us, bar underscore race on Instagram. Those interviews you put up with the kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's yeah. funny. The thing is with, with, with Rock Up that I think 
surprises some people when they come the first time is that you ain't special when you come to Rock Up. Yeah. Right? You ain't special. You might be special out there, but when you come to Rock Up, and I think some people like that. People, some people want the special treatment, but people also want to come and be a part of a group where they can just forget about their title outside of the training environment yeah. and just assimilate themselves into a group and do everything the other group doing. So people just come in and they just be like, I can't get the sandbag by my shoulder. It's like, all right, go across there, use that box, and the boy helping you. <laughs> you know, we, we, we give them the tools and the skills. And to watch people who come in the first day struggle and like look around for help. And by week three, week four, they say, I need no help. I can figure this out. Yeah. That to me is one of the most rewarding parts of teaching this program. Yeah, and that's the thing as, as well about all of the different bar aspects. You, you just seeing the improvement yeah. and people are people just becoming more and more addicted as they improve. Yeah, and you know, I, I coach in a different way to a lot of coaches. I, I, I believe that people are way more capable than, than they think they are. And so I, I like to see people struggle. You know, as soon as you struggle once, I ain't coming over to help you. I'm giving you a chance to figure it out. And only when I see that you're stuck am I going to step in. Mm -hmm. And they're going to give you a chance to really struggle with it, work it out. Because I think there's a greater sense of achievement and accomplishment when you figure it out yourself. Definitely. You know, and, and people do feel much, much more rewarded in that situation. So sometimes people come into the environment for the first time, they're like, nobody can help me. And then they start to do their own thing. They realize why you're not necessarily jumping in too early. Yeah. And then they appreciate that as well. All right, man. I think we get them a mouthful of air full Listen, of Jay, lots of information. I had uh, coffee at a monster before this podcast, so you know, <laughs> you know how it was. It's just going to point me in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> stop it. Yeah, yeah man, that was a good one, though. I hope you got all the information. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Also, ask any questions down below in the comment section. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to put this up in a live broken up blocks as well for digestible information. But that has been the latest episode of the Barcast podcast. And I mean, as long as we said, never stop talking about bar, but it's a rock up. Yeah, Everything yeah, we yeah. talk, people talk about rock up all the time too. Yes, so yes, yes. don't forget guys, never, ever, ever stop talking about bar. <laughs>